Hi, Miss Laura here. This is the Sunday School lesson for March 22nd for our second through fifth graders. Um, and really quickly, I want to review the church seasons that we've gone through recently. Right now, we're in the season of Lent when we think extra about Jesus and all that he did. It's a 40-day period, and it ends with a celebration of Easter. But before that, when we were getting ready to celebrate Jesus' birth at Christmas time, we were in the season of Advent, which is four Sundays. Then for two Sundays, we were in the season of Christmas, technically. The whole the whole thing we call this the Christmas season, but we were celebrating um, the birth of Jesus in a really special way. And then after that, um, starting January 6th, we were in the season of Epiphany, which is the word we use for the season of remembering the wise men traveling to see the child Jesus. And so Epiphany ended right before Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday was the first day of Lent. So we are on our third Sunday in Lent. Excuse me, we're on our fourth Sunday of Lent. <sighs> Messed that up. If you check out your Lenten calendar, you'll see March 22nd, fourth Sunday. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. John 3, 16. You've probably heard that Bible verse before. But I encourage you to grab your Bibles and read what it says around that verse, the context of it before and after, and learn more about that passage. Um, so I also want to review our Bible verse that we've been learning through Lent, John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Can we do the sign together, you guys? Put your hands out. Resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. And that's a beautiful thing that Jesus says to us today as well as to his disciples long ago. Um, so I'm going to pray and then we will have our Bible lesson. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are with us always. You bring us together in a very special way, even when we are all at home and we can't be in the same room together. I thank you that you unite us. Your Holy Spirit um, draws us together. Amen. So one day Jesus was traveling with his disciples and they came upon a man who had been born blind without sight. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, which means teacher in Hebrew, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? And that, that's why he was born blind, right? Somebody sinned first. But Jesus said, this man did sin and his parents didn't sin. That's not, that's not why people are born blind. This happened so that the works of God might be displayed in this man. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So Jesus said, that's, that's not the right conversation to be having. We don't think that people are born blind or born a certain way as punishment for a sin. That's not how it works. But after saying this, Jesus did something very strange. Um, it's hard to explain. He spit on the ground and he made some mud with his spit and he put it on the man's eyes. Go, he said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And so the man went and washed and then he could see. It was amazing. The man's neighbors saw the man and they said, is this the same man that used to sit here and, and ask for money? He couldn't work because he was blind, but this man can see. So this is a different man, right? And some said, yeah, that's the same man. And other people were like, no, that is not the same person. But the man who had been born blind said, yeah, it's, it's me. I'm the same guy. I can just see now. And they said, how, how did your eyes be? get opened. Who, who healed your eyes? And he said, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I did that. And now I can see, where is this man? They asked. I don't know. He said, so they brought the religious leaders and the man together. They said, um, we need to find out who did this to this man. Now, this day that Jesus had healed the man's eyes was the Sabbath day, the day when the Jewish people were not supposed to do any work. They were intending to rest and worship God. And so the religious leaders asked the man uh, how he got his sight back. And the man said, this guy put mud on my eyes and I wash my eyes and now I can see. And some of the religious leaders said, whoever healed you is not from God because that person is working on the Sabbath, a day they should be resting. That's not right. But other people said, well, if the person is a sinner, how could he heal the man's eyes? That doesn't make sense. So they were not sure what, what was going on or who this person really was. So they asked the man who had been born blind, what do you say about this man? You, you were healed by him. What do you, what can you tell us about him? The man said, he is a prophet. 
um, but they didn't believe him. And they didn't even believe that he had really been born blind. So they called his parents in and they said, is this your son? Was he really born blind? Tell us about him. And they said, this is our son. We know he was born blind, um, but he's old enough. You can ask him questions himself. He'll answer you. Um, they, they said that because they were really nervous. They didn't want to be expelled or removed from the synagogue, the place of worship, because the religious leaders had said, if anyone starts following Jesus and calling him the Messiah, they are not allowed to be a part of the synagogue anymore. It was a big deal. So his parents were nervous. So the religious leaders kept asking and asking. And finally, the man who was born blind said, I don't, I don't know. But one thing I know, I was blind, but now I can see. So they said, well, how did he open your eyes? And he said, I told you this already and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to be his disciples? So he started getting some attitude with them. And then they got really angry with him. They were insulting him. They were saying, you're this man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. And we know that God spoke to Moses. But the person who healed your eyes, we don't even know where he comes from. Who is he? And the man who was born blind said, this is amazing. You don't know where he comes from, but he healed me. He opened my eyes. We know that God listens to godly people who do his will. And so... Who has ever heard of somebody being born blind and then having their eyes opened again, having sight again? This is amazing. If this man was not from God, he couldn't do what he did for my eyes. And they said, you don't know anything. You're a regular common person. You're just in sin. Get out of here. And so they were very cruel and rude to him. And they threw him out. Jesus heard about this. And he went and found the man who was born blind. And he said, do you believe in the son of man? Now, if you remember, son of man is a term that Jesus would use for himself um, to talk about how he's he's a human, the son of man, a human person. Um, but also it's a term that was used in the Bible to mean um, God's special chosen king, a kingly ruler. So he said, do you believe in the son of man? And the man said, who is he? Tell me so that I can believe in him. And Jesus said, you've seen him. You're talking to him right now. It's me. And the man who was born blind said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world so that the blind will see and that those who can see will become blind. And some religious religious leaders who were there with him um, were angry and they said, what are we? Are you going to make us blind too? Or are we blind right now? They didn't understand what he was talking about and they were insulted. And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But because you're saying that you can see and you understand, you are, you are guilty. You've sinned. Now, Jesus is doing some really amazing things in this story. And sometimes they're kind of hard to understand. He does two especially amazing things. He heals a man who had been born blind and... That's never happened anywhere that I've read or, or anywhere that I've lived, except this story that I've read in the Bible. So this is amazing. But he also uses the idea of blindness to talk about how some people were spiritually blind. They weren't really blind with their eyes. They could see, but they were blind with their hearts. They could not understand who Jesus was. They could not understand the way that God wanted them to live. And so this story um, also teaches us that God does not do terrible things to us when we sin. He doesn't uh, send terrible things our way. He didn't make the man blind because the man's parents had sinned. He didn't make the man blind because the man had sinned. Jesus said that's not how God works. Instead, he says the man was born blind so the works of God might be displayed in him or shown in him. I believe that in every bad thing that happens, there is a chance for us to meet with Jesus and come closer to him. The world is not perfect. There are a lot of terrible things in the world. And I'm sure you've noticed that by now. Um, And bad things can happen no matter who we are, no matter where we are, at any time. But Jesus is with us. When those bad things are happening, I encourage you to turn to Jesus more and more and ask him to help you through that. Especially right now, let's call out to Jesus, the light of the world, to give us and all people in the world a light in our darkness. So um, I just also want to say that I miss all of you guys a lot and I would love to hear from you. So please send me any prayer requests that you have or any anything that you want to share with me. And there is a lot that I did not talk about in this Bible story. And I, so if you have questions about it, please send them to me and I will do my best to answer them. Um, so we can't be together in the same room, but I want you to know that your Sunday school teachers and I are all um, still here for you. We love you.
Uh, so let's close with our Sunday School closing blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.